Hi everyone, my name is Steph. Welcome back to my home and back to my YouTube channel. I have been back posting for a couple of weeks now with the intention of posting at least once a week. And I wanted to take this week to discuss something very important. And that is what I actually want to share here moving forward and the story so far about where I've been and where I'm gonna be going. Some of y'all are aware I have a very long history on this platform as well. This channel has had videos on it for like at least seven or eight years. And I've gone through a few different phases of life through that time. And of course I'm in a new one now, uh, but I do want to address what I believe is an extremely important chapter of my life and of the life of this channel, which is Bread Squad and Bread Mom, and whether or not that is something I wanna bring forward. So without further ado, let's start discussing where I've actually been. Before I officially left YouTube for this very long break, I actually already had started a new Twitch channel. And when I came back to say my goodbye was when I felt that I was comfortable enough to share that with the rest of the community that we'd built here and say, this is what I'm doing. But that was easily like six months into this project that I called over on Twitch, the campfire. The campfire was meant to be an inclusive space where people of all backgrounds could come and sit around this metaphorical figurative campfire, maybe their monitors, their phone, whatever it might be, to visit and commune with others and be part of a social experience where there would not be judgment, where there would not be hatred, heaviness, none of that, just a cozy and relieving environment. And certainly unified by an appreciation of gaming or through a sense of community, especially for folks of marginalized backgrounds. The idea of the campfire actually came out of the pandemic. I was living downtown Toronto with my partner Travis who is magnificent and was a huge huge help in getting this Twitch channel started with his knowledge of tech and actually executing a project to finish and we were living in the city box as we call it this tiny little tiny tiny studio apartment and it would look out into the city into our neighborhood at these other distant apartment buildings and you could see these little lights on in people's homes and we were staying up very late 3 a.m. some nights and you'd see other people's little fires in the distance, kind of like a Neolithic campfire experience. But it was in the modern day and these people trapped in their homes during this time in downtown Toronto, you could not be going places with very much freedom at all. There was this sense of, I see you out there. And with so many people in deep isolation during that time, I wanted to share that also digitally and bring people together around a campfire when they couldn't be together. Travis really helped um, in executing the, the Twitch channel and that community, and it was a very special, very sentimental, very healing experience on so many levels for me as a person and as a creator. When it came to what we were actually doing at the campfire, we focused a lot on narrative elements of games, world building, environmental storytelling, characterization, lore, speculation, and we loved RPGs. But we did a lot of other things. We especially had a ton of fun with horror games as well, and the mystery, you know, ooh, what's gonna happen? What's that? What does this mean? But also, uh, there was, uh, we played um, Alien Isolation, and my friend Claire actually put together a bitch counter, and I said the word bitch during my gameplay of Alien Isolation, which was under nine hours, something above 200 times out of fear. So there was a lot of fun happening. Oh. Oh my god, they're a streamer! <laughs> Where did that spider go? However, with this Twitch channel, I also learned so much about community. And it led me to reflect on my experiences with YouTube continuously over and over and over as I grew that platform. And it's a very, very different platform from YouTube in terms of what numbers mean. And uh, the way that I got to interact with individuals on that platform is very different than in the YouTube comments section. I started YouTube, as some of you might know, when I was, um, I mean, 12 years old, but this channel really took off when I was about 19. I was a kid. I was a kid. This is almost 10 years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what a community really was, a digital community. Certainly none of us did at that time, not really. And I also had a ton of like interpersonal discoveries to make. There was, there was very little understanding for me about what I was doing at that time, but it was working really well and that's all I really knew. But the approach with Twitch allowed me to do things with intention and with understanding and with wisdom. And I learned so much in doing that. It honestly allowed me to confront a massive part of my social anxiety and the experience opened me up to connecting with people in a way that I had never known before, both with direct friendships and with a more parasocial, you know, viewer and streamer relationship. I learned about connecting with people in a more genuine way where the vulnerability wasn't in pain 
It was in joy and sharing the things that I loved, which is not something that I really did with this YouTube channel after a while. I did share some gaming stuff early on, but I very quickly said, no, that is to be kept safe. And that really represented um, a building of walls. And that's something I had to discover over time. All in all, my entire understanding of social interaction has been changed by my experience with the campfire, genuinely. And I am so grateful to everybody that was a part of that experience and still is a part of that experience. Right now, I am on hiatus from Twitch because I want to put my creative energy elsewhere, like right here. And we've had a slew of issues happening with the house, <laughs> but I do plan on returning very soon. Ideally in the summer, we'll have to see, I'll keep you posted. But when that time comes, I'll certainly let you all know that I'll be starting up Twitch again and I'd love Love for you to join us at the campfire over on Twitch. A major thing we have to do over here is to get the streaming room ready, um, which has been flooding, okay? As you might have seen on Instagram. So uh, can't put tons of tech in there right now, okay? But we're getting there. Speaking of the house, that's another huge component of this journey where I've been, I moved. I moved. If you watched the apartment tour as my first sort of comeback video, you will know that I relocated um, many hours away from downtown Toronto into a small town very much like my hometown. It is a much more rural community out near where I grew up. Some of you might remember some of the things that I said about my hometown and growing up in a smaller community as a trans person, and those experiences absolutely happened. They absolutely, you know, I did feel those ways at those times, and I had to. There was a lot that I had to work through. But with years of therapy, I have been able to heal things in ways I never thought were possible and feel safety in ways that I never imagined feeling again. And as a result of that process, I genuinely love being in a small town again. I felt such a yearning for the trees and the open air and the space and even seeing the farmland and the barns and the crops the cycle of growth through the seasons, the way that people interact with each other here is beautiful. And you know, every community has its issues, but like, that's exactly what that means. Everywhere you go, there will be issues. You have to choose what's important to you and build your life there. And I had that choice and I took it. I was basically forced to run away from my hometown when I was 17 in order to find safety in the big city as a queer person. That's what I had to do. But 10 years later, I found myself missing that central part of my identity and it was still there and it was waiting for me and I came back. There were also much more practical reasons like the cost of living right now in Toronto is just silly, okay? What the? It's silly everywhere, but it's unsustainable to a ridiculous, but this, you know what? This is not what this video is about. Basically just know that that 500 square foot apartment that we were renting for the apartment tour video costed us more than the relatively large house that we're in now compared to that apartment. Way more for a studio in Toronto, way more. So we're, do we're, we're satisfied with this choice. But you know, on the positive side of things, my partner and I are really excited to be here. We love the area and the environment. We love our neighbors even. And we are having so much fun turning this house into our home like we did with the apartment, but we have so much more space to work with now and so many more projects and so many more ways to represent ourselves in our home and make space for activities that we wanna to do together. And that's just so exciting. So we will be sharing a lot of that on this channel. In fact, um, very soon I want to record a video where I learn and teach myself, maybe with my partner's assistance, how to change the kitchen faucet, how to replace it for another one. I am nervous. I've never done that before. I might have to watch some Mercury Stardust. I might have to reach out to the trans handyman. Seriously, divine, divine woman, okay? Maybe she can help me. But I'm gonna do that soon and I'll post the video here. So things like that where I get to learn these, these skills as a trans woman who maybe wasn't really taught these skills in a safe and compassionate way, uh, which is something I've really learned from Mercury Stardust who I admire a ton. Could probably do a whole video just talking about how cool she is but you'll just have to take my word for it and go check her out. But other than the faucet, let me know what kind of home reno or home decorating videos you might want to see. Other important rooms are like the streaming room and the video game room and the studio, which I'm in right now recording this video. And those are both really major works in progress, but like what you can see here is juicy and that's all that matters, right? But the rest of this room, listen. She'll get there, she'll get there. So in making all of these changes in my life when it came to Twitch and YouTube and moving especially, I started remembering more and more feelings that I had when I was a kid and a teenager and a young adult. 
things that I had buried or left behind or forgotten about. And certainly the feelings that I had when I was 19 years old and documenting my transition on YouTube. I remembered why I started doing this in the first place. And I remembered this core belief and core value that I had that I'd forgotten all about. And it was that I wanted people, when they came to watch my videos or interact with me on the internet, I wanted them to feel better than they did when they'd arrived. And over the years as a creator, somewhere along the line, I lost sight of that completely. I forgot about a lot of things. And transitioning so publicly, I didn't have a lot of boundaries. And I wasn't always operating in the way that was the safest for my well-being especially my mental well-being, my emotional well-being. So when hard things would happen in my life, I found myself in a really vulnerable position and I had to develop ways to protect myself, which involved hiding and emotionally concealing or abandoning entire parts of myself that really needed care and attention and wanted to be seen. And through that, the heart that I had, not only for content creation, but for everything in the world was obscured behind protection. That is something that I've put a lot of work into correcting and nurturing. And I understand that caring for my emotional well-being, and if you don't, and if you haven't internalized this yet in your own life, like just let it in as I say this, okay? Caring for your emotional well-being is something that will always need tending. It is a garden that needs regular watering and weeding and care. I am here returning to YouTube to be creative, to share my joy and my love for life, my hope, my dreams, and to help others feel better, even if it's just for a couple of minutes. And with that said, I want to address something as a transgender creator returning to trans YouTube. Unfortunately, whether we want to or not, transgender creators and people are heavily politicized, really without our consent, without our desire. We are really just thrown into a culture war by existing, and that is not our fault. So many of us, even individuals that aren't creators, are forced into advocacy and activism just to get through their day to day. I certainly was. And I mean, look at what Dylan Mulvaney is going through right now just for being sponsored by a beer company on her own social pages, a single beer can. And the reality is that cisgender people, cisgender creators are simply not faced with this in response to simply their presence. I was subjected to this to what I thought was a harrowing degree back in 2015, 2016, 2017. It is worse now. And I have to try really hard not to get extremely angry about that, but I do try to not be extremely angry about that because there are other ways that I can contribute to making this better. I think it's incredibly important as part of standing up to this issue for people to see trans people engaging in normalcy, happiness, and peace. The constant connotation to trans people of fighting, of pain, and anger continues to frame us as polarizing others when we are simply human beings with the same needs as everybody else. And you might say, okay, we have different medical needs, but so does everybody else. And that's nobody's business. If you take that away, what is there to fight about? With my content moving forward on YouTube and on other platforms, I want to help represent a normalcy and peace for the trans community as a way of contributing to a better world for us. I'm sure you've heard phrases like representation matters and you can't be what you can't see. These are most often attributed to representation in things like TV, films, video games, and other forms of media. But the nuance of it goes beyond including a figure from a marginalized community, beyond a trans person just being there, it matters what they are doing and saying and showing. And there are so many great creators out there engaging in complex, intricate, nuanced discussions of sociopolitical concepts and, and conflicts. And that is really important and really incredible. Creators like ContraPoints or Abigail from Philosophy Tube, and also individuals that aren't content creators, but grassroots organizers and activist groups in their local communities. And all of that is incredibly important, but I am no longer able to contribute in these ways, in these highly politicized ways, because I know what it will do to me. And I care about others, but I care about myself and I have needs and it could do to me what it did before. So I will be here and I want to contribute, but I have to do that in my way. I have to respect myself, my needs and my boundaries. And that is why I'm going to be making such an effort, an effort 
to spotlight trans joy and stability. And I know that there's people out there that can relate to this. You do not need to have righteous anger all the time. It is so important to breathe. I do want to shout out a couple more trans content creators right now, um, namely, First, Mercury Stardust, who I mentioned earlier, the trans handy ma'am. She makes incredible, accessible, and compassionate content around maintenance of your home and safety and uh, like home renovation and decor in ways that are so understandable. And she really understands the ways that certain communities, especially say women and queer people, have been excluded from learning these skills and are left to sort of fend for themselves and figure it out. And she, she speaks with such knowledge and compassion and I love I love what she does, and I really recommend you check her out. And another individual I want to highlight right now is Samantha Lux, who was coming up in YouTube back when I was, you know, doing my thing. And she is now, and, and has been for a number of years, a very successful creator. And she just got her facial feminization surgery. And I think that's amazing. Congratulations, Samantha. And I would ask that y'all reach out to her on whatever social platform and wish her the best in recovery. Back to the point of the video though, I want to lead with compassion and kindness and not with righteous anger. I find when others do that, I find that endlessly inspiring and moving and motivating. And I used to be a righteous anger girl and I thought giving into that anger, I thought it felt right and it felt good. But that is not how I wanna show up all these years later. That isn't who I am and frankly, it's not who I was. And if you watched me prior to you won't even know when it was, but I do, okay? But if you watched me early on, you would have seen that kindness and compassion and it did get lost and that sucks. But that leads me to a place that's very soft and sentimental and that is discussing being bread mom and the bread squad community. For those of you that don't know, somewhat early in my YouTube career, this was like 2015, 2016, I was called Bread Mom and the community was called the Bread Squad. And I had this intro I did every time and it was, hello little buns, my name is Steph, welcome back to my home. Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. And I put so much love into that. And I know y'all felt that. And I really wanted to make you feel welcomed and acknowledged and recognized and that you belonged to something with everyone else that was here. And I think we achieved that together. And for a long time, it was really, really beautiful. However, when I started to behave in ways that weren't very healthy, I definitely alienated that feeling and members of the community and the spirit that was Bread Squad. And I am really very sorry about that. Up there, we have Steph's one award, the one thing she did, the one achievement she made being so sweet and cute. The one thing she did was collect a really loving group of beautiful people that appreciated her and she appreciated them back and they created something unique that had never been seen before together. And they supported each other through hard times. And then I killed her and replaced her, so it's fine. And I wish I'd known better then, but I do now. And when I decided I wanted some space and time away from YouTube two or three years ago, I said then that I wanted to put Bread Mom and Bread Squad in a beautiful ornate box and put it on the shelf and let it be a respected part of the past and to remember it with fondness, but to not bring it forward in my life. And at the time I really needed to do that because I had to figure out who the hell I was without any of that. And that was really hard. However, coming back, as I said earlier, has brought back a lot of feelings that I forgot entirely about, about why I started this and so many different feelings that I've rediscovered. Additionally, when I posted my apartment tour comeback video, a lot of commenters were really excitedly commenting things like bread mom is back and bread squad forever. And I loved that and I do not want to shut that down, but I am confused and unsure about whether or not I want to bring this forward. In some ways, I want to step into the future without expectations. But in others, I love what Bread Squad was so, so much. And I feel it deserved more than what I was able to give those last few years. And I know this is maybe obscure to a lot of people, but I also want to acknowledge a Warcraft guild that I was a part of, and frankly, it, I mean, I started it, <laughs> that was called Bread Squad. And that was something I walked away from without acknowledging what that would do to the people in that community. And I want to apologize for that. I'm sorry. Like I said, the Bread Squad deserved more than what I was able to give at that time. It was really a very special thing. And I recently, I've been watching back old content and I watched an interview I did for ET Canada Pride. 
And the host of that interview said that it was a found family. And I didn't understand that at the time, but I do now, I see that. I see that that's exactly what Bread Squad was. And I cannot believe that we made that together. That is very important to people. What are your buns? You call your fans buns. Little buns, Little yes. buns. What do your little buns mean to you? Well, when I first started transitioning, I knew, and even before that, I knew that a lot of queer people, especially trans people, had a lot of family trouble. A lot of them didn't have a supportive family, and a lot of them even have become, you know, disowned after they come out, right? And I wanted to provide um, something that they could belong to. And that's something that I received growing up through musicians and, and entertainers, and I thought, okay, if I can provide that somehow, I'm going to. I didn't really understand how, how large scale it would become, um, but I wanted to give people something to belong to and, and some kind of maternal place or maternal um, feeling. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad I could, I could do that. Yeah, I mean, there's that saying, and I've said it before here on the show, that as queer people, sometimes we have to find our family. Yes. That said, I'm also very conscious of parasocial relationships and the ways that those need to have certain boundaries around them. And I used to say things like, I love you all so much. And I would also say things like, I am nothing without you. And I would believe that, and that was not healthy. And to say things like, I love you so much, I do want to make you feel good and make you feel acknowledged and like you belong, but I can't say stuff like that. That's not right. So here's what I know. I care about the way y'all feel. When you come here, when you engage with my content, I want you to feel better than when you arrived. And that is something I'm really trying to re-implement into my day-to-day. -day. It's gonna take some time to get it right everywhere, but I'm working on it. Another thing that I know is that I need to have boundaries around myself, what I'm sharing, and how I'm taking care of my emotional needs. I also know that I adore what Bread Squad was and what Bread Mom means. And I also know that I'm in a new chapter of my life and I don't know what I want it to look like entirely yet. So I'm unsure and that's where I'm at. But I do know what I want to provide. And in summary, okay, trans joy, trans peace, trans stability. I want to demonstrate that for the trans community and for the world. And I want that to be my weapon of choice. If y'all have seen everything everywhere all at once, you will know that the wife character had a lot of anger and she fought with that. And you'll know that the husband character has this incredibly touching and amazing monologue where he describes his choice to move through life with kindness and understanding and that that is fighting and that is how he survives and i am in a bit of that transition period with those emotions right now i have been for a little while i'm still working through it but that's what i mean when i say that's how i want to contribute that is important and i know there's folks out there that feel that and you're not alone in that feeling. So all that being said, you can say Steph Sanyadi is back, you can say Bread Mom is back, you can say whatever it is you like, but yes, I'm back on YouTube, and I am back on trans YouTube, and I am going to talk about that. I'm here for my community, and I want to stand in solidarity with other trans creators that are experiencing, you know, amazing things, but certainly also awful harassment, death threats, horrible things. I understand. I'm with you. I've been there. So I guess I'll stop here. Thank you so much for watching, for listening to me. Until next time, just remember, your emotional needs are not a burden. They're not a nuisance and they're not selfish, okay? You can take care of those. That's okay. It's not only okay, it's essential. And it's selfless to put yourself first. I will see you again very soon with more YouTube content. I post once weekly here. I post daily on Instagram. Thanks for hanging out with me in my home and have a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Bye. Mwah.